So picking up where we left off last time, we're going to assemble the blocks that form the shape of the nose of the mold. And here I'm applying the glue to glue the bottom layer, as you see here, um, to the one above it. And to save time, I glued the layers together in pairs rather than gluing one and then the other and then the other. And you can see the little blocks that I five minute epoxy to the top layer to keep it from sliding um, in that one axis. And the clamp is angled so to keep some pressure against the block. It's a really nice way to align things and um, side to side. I just did it by feel and used two screws um, at the joint just tacked in there um, for alignment. They were drilled first. Um, so once everything was nicely aligned, it came out pretty good. And when it was cured, I flipped it over because when the bottom piece had been cut, the bit was only so long and I modeled it so that it didn't crash into the thick block. So I have to come back and cut off that excess material so that it will lay up flat against the front side of the strip planked part. So I'm just docking off the, uh, the excess here. The track saw, it would be nice if I had hooked up the vacuum, um, but a lot of this is pretty quick and dirty, so I'm in a huge rush and I'm cutting all the corners and working on a lot of trash cans. So I'm just um, giving it a rough plane, making sure not to mess up the surface that was machined. So I'm just digging into the bit um, so I don't, I don't uh, ruin my alignment feature and uh, smoothing up the bottom so it's not sharp and it's not gonna cut me when I'm handling it. And I, at the same time, I glued the, some of the top pieces together um, using a very similar method. There are little blocks glued to the back of the upper one for uh, front to back alignment. You can see me pull up against those there and then side to side I just managed um, with a clamp at the back right where my hands are there. I'll put a clamp across that um, to make sure that the inside faces are nicely aligned. And a little tweaking and there it is. Um, there was a little lip from machining and so I just cut that off with a router. It was easy. <coughs> Excuse me, when these go together uh, I'll be able to skim that. Now we're looking at the back of the assembled strip plank uh, section. We're gonna put the what I'm calling bulkheads on there that form the front and back of that section. These also have to get their edges cleaned up um, so I held them on the router by not cutting all the way through which is a nice thing to do with MDF where you can flip it over and handle it like that with a router just copy cut the edge and so it's all buttered up here with thickened epoxy and the clamp across the top holds it to the exact measurement it's supposed to be um, while I'm gluing this on here and these will stiffen up the front and provide a little bit of shape to the back they were held in with screws and glue um, and this is the one in the back that has a little more shape to it um, and it's glued on. Now moving around to the front um, I set up that bottom block that forms the nose piece on some shims and junk and put some glue in there. Once it's glued on um, the bottom will be unsupported but I'm using some small blocks with screws bridging the joint. The blocks have got packing tape on them and a bunch of clamps in all different ways to hold that right where I want it until the glue cures. Um, this is a key piece. If this is misaligned, everything else is hard to deal with later. Um, now I'm gluing up the next layer, um, the thickened epoxy. Going to get everything aligned. Um, but this will be pretty much the same way I glue them off the job but I just wanted to get this one done because I was there and um, 
You can see some Bondo pads on top of that layer. Um, the whole stack ended up too thin because of the a mismeasurement I made with thickness of the MDF. And so I made it up there um, by putting some pads of Bondo on top. And when I glue on top of this, um, I'll be able to make up that thickness and fare it in. Um, sort of a, a hack, but it works pretty well. Um, so clamps and blocks again here. Working my way around. I don't need a lot of clamping pressure, just enough to hold it together. And then the final layer, which had been glued together on that trash can before. And um, some thickened resin around the top. I'm going to glue on the perimeter flange piece at the same time, um, probably because I was in a hurry. Ideally, these would be two separate steps. There was a lot of uh, doing this when I could get to do it and trying to get it done as quickly as possible. And this piece will be put on not super tight. Uh, there's a lot of extra material there and I kind of want to squeeze it down and this will um, keep the top the right shape um, and also just provide a smooth um, edge for when I glass the inside. Just some gentle clamping while I get it aligned. And it lined up pretty nicely with everything. This piece was machined from the model and the model matched up pretty nicely with everything else. So there's the assembled piece, all the gluing done, and now some fairing. I'm gonna get in there with a grinder and knock down any lumps of stuff. Um, it's a pretty nasty job, but it didn't take too long. It ended up pretty nice. Um, just making sure that joint is as good as it can be before it gets glassed went around and did some more filling with the, um, the red micro balloons you can see here and I'm um, gonna do a little bit of radius on the joints um, sanding fairing filling all the holes and getting it ready for the fiberglass so this is the finished bed I radiused all the joints so the glass would go over um, and give this a quick sand up and move on to putting six ounce fiberglass over the whole thing to give it vacuum integrity and that'll be the next step.